Welcome to a celebration of Scottish music and of course featuring Robbie Burns. The 25th of January was, is his birthday and we'll start with a classic Burns tune, Ye Banks and Brays. I'm Sunita Stanislaw and this is Uli Schleifer. Jaffa, Israel, and it's a rainy day, Scottish weather, certainly. And you may be wondering, why is a harpist named Sunita Stanislaw playing Scottish music here with uh, Uli Schleifer celebrating Burns? Well, my husband, Fred, was born and raised in Edinburgh. And our kids were born in Minnesota, where I'm from, and we moved to Israel in 2000, the year 2000, and we raised our children here. But we wanted to do something Scottish for them. They, they went back in the summers to Minnesota. They really got to know their Israeli and Jewish family and here, but what to do for Scotland. So we decided to start celebrating Burns' Supper. Robert Burns, the great poet, poet laureate really of Scotland, has his birthday on the 25th of January. So we would celebrate every year with our kids as they grew up. Everyone had to come and bring a joke, or food, or a story, or song. And that's how we celebrated Burns Supper. A little bit more casually, but really, really the whole idea was to have fun and be proud to be Scottish. And of course, we had pipers and fiddle players and people sing.
play for you now a solo that's one of my favorite, favorite melodies. The words are, of course, by Robbie Burns. My love is like a red, red rose. Now, a set of tunes, a burn song, John Anderson, my Joe, and this time it's in the voice of a woman. Um, Burns is known for his melodies that are about, that, that extol the beauty of nature and lovely lassies. And this is really now John Anderson, my Joe, a song about old love. As his hair was once raven and now is like the snow. And then Uri will join me in the Scottish reel Glenlivet. I first heard John Anderson, my Joe, performed by the harp duo Sheilas, and they sang it, and I fell in love with it. John Anderson, my Joe.
introduce to you Leif Schleifer, who's been part of the Irish scene in Israel as long as I can remember, so at least 15 years. And I'll let him introduce his next set and, uh, and a little bit of history about you being a, actually a piper. So we really need to be, you know, piping in the haggis, but uh, I guess there's no good place to practice the great pipe. So you yeah. switch to fiddle? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, um, I'm a classically trained violinist, and um, when I uh, when I was about 18 or 19 years old, part of my so-called rebellion was to to put aside the the, the violin as it was then, and uh, start playing the Scottish bagpipes. And um, I liked it at first, but it was. Um, there were many problems finding a place to to play or to to practice. So after a couple of years, um, I started thinking about well, I I'm, I'm already classically trained. I have a fiddle, but a slash violin, and why not try to play some Irish music and Scottish music as well? So that's where it all started, and uh, the rest is history. And uh, it was about 15 years ago. And uh, the set that I'm going to play is uh, a set that you would hear very often in, in Cayleys in Scotland or the Scottish diaspora. Uh, it consists of uh, a march, a straspe, and a reel. Um, a straspe and reels are both uh, dances. And um, um, the march is, is called uh, Father John Macmillan of Barra. The stress pay is called Highland Harry. And the reel is called Mrs. McLeod of Rassi. Um, all, all of these tunes are pipe tunes that are uh, played uh, in Cayley's um, on uh, fills and accordions. So, a couple of pipe tunes on the fiddle.
much. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> My dog, Lizzie, walked in. She loves the fiddle. She came <laughs> in to catch the action, what's going on, and headed out. Um, when we celebrate our burn supper, it's always been a family affair with our dog and cats and kids and food and pipes, fiddle, and, of course, a uh, haggis. Now, that doesn't sound very kosher or Israeli, but we um, have very tasty vegetarian and vegan haggis recipes, and we would uh, always be piping in with torches out through the neighborhood, and people would come out of their houses and apartments, what's this, and follow us as we go around the block with torches, holding up the haggis, and then, of course, there's a, a whole ceremony that comes with um, celebrating the haggis, eating the haggis, toasting to the lads and lassies. So I would like to invite uh, my Scottish-born husband, who will recite some poetry and tell you a bit about what he had to do as a young lad in Edinburgh. Fred? Well, it's grand to be here this evening. Um, thank you, Sunita. And, uh, Back in the day, I was a wee lad growing up in Edinburgh, and we were taught Burns poetry. Can you imagine that? The great bard of Scotland taught to all the children of the land. Can you imagine if every country in the world had the most famous person was a poet instead of generals and presidents? That would be a very <laughs> different world for us to live in. Um, now, Burns was quite the man. He wrote in Scots. Now, Scots is not Gaelic. Scots is a very particular dialect that's a blend of English and Gaelic together. And he made the Scots language permanent by writing in it. And so the poem I'm going to recite to you today is about the haggis. Now, the haggis is a very particular bird. You could say it's a national bird of Scotland. It's got one wee leg shorter than the other, so it can run around the hillsides where it has its burrows and uh, catch the wee mice that it eats. And then we catch the wee haggis and we make it into a meal. But of course, like Sarita said, we are vegan, and so we make a vegan haggis. But nevertheless, uh, I have here a really great book of Burns poetry. It's well-thumbed, fallen apart, quite honestly. And this particular poem, To a Haggis, Burns uh, wrote back in 1786. That was, uh, ooh, about 10 years after the Americans kicked the Brits out. And we all came back home with our tail between our legs. Anyway, right after arriving in Edinburgh, for the first time, Burns wrote this. And I'm just going to read a few stanzas for you. Fair for your honest sonsy face, great chieftain o' the puddin race, aboon them a' ye tack your place, paunch tripe or therm. Weel are ye wordy o' grace, as langs my arm. His knife see rustic labor dight, and cut ye up with ready slight, trenching your gushing entrails bright like ony ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious sight, warm, reeking, rich. Ye powers will mak mankind your care, and dish them out their bill of fare. All Scotland wants nay skin can wear that droops and luggies. But if ye wish her grateful prayer, give a haggis. Thank you. So that's my Scottish American Israeli husband and now we're going full circle. We bought a house in Shetland and we'll be moving in a couple years back for Fred and for the first time to me to Scotland to all the way north to Shetland. In our burn supper we'd be getting geared up now to do the toast to the lads and to the lassies. So in lieu of a toast to the lassies we'll play for you a Burns tune, Green Grow the Rashes, O. Oh. And in the chorus, it speaks about the sweetest hours that e'er I spent are spent among the lassies, O. Oh. So this is our toast to the lassies.
I'll play a piece for you now, the Highland Boat Song. It's um, been really interesting for me, I live right by the sea, to go down and catch the sunset. Now that we have so many lockdowns, the beach has become private, it feels like to me. So I went one day with one of these gorgeous sunsets and what if I brought my heart? I could have this conversation with the sea.
the waves were pretty big. I was thinking of those just the other day. But I think it's perfect for tonight that we have uh, rain. Puts us a little closer to Scotland because it's been beautiful Mediterranean climate and feels right to celebrate our burn supper in the rain. <laughs> Two classic tunes, Wild Mountain Time, and then we'll go into the Flower of Edinburgh. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
classic, fun, Mari's Wedding is sung, oh, I learned it from the chieftains. It's sung um, in all over Scotland. My husband remembers hearing it at folk clubs. Mari's Wedding was written in the 30s and has a real modern feel. Originally some Gaelic words. We're gonna have some fun end with a dance tune. joining us this evening celebrating Burns Supper, Scottish music, and that we can still gather and do music even if it's online. I'd like to invite my husband Fred up for a, a final toast, but first we'll post the words, we'll all sing together, Old Lang Syne. There's a melody that most of you know in North America they sing, but in Scotland, there's a, a more of a traditional Burns melody. I love this one. So we'll play this. There's five verses. It goes by really fast. And then we'll toast. Hi, Lizzie. That's my dog. Okay. I set the keys with this. This is a Camac Ulysse harp that's uh, been able to go with me across the seas. I can fly with it. I love it. Lord Lang's eye.
thank you for joining me. Tonight. Thank you. And Fred, the man behind the camera. Right. Well, here we are. Let's have it, folks. Tarabi Burns, Slanjabar. Slanjabar. Slanjabar.